Hey everybody, Coach Jason here. I hope you're all doing well. So we're going to continue putting the pieces together in this series. And today we're going to talk about 10K progressions. We've done 5K progressions. We've done 3K, mile, 800. We're going to move on to half marathon and marathon. And then we're going to move over to predictor workouts. And then we're going to keep it going after that. So if you're a coach or an athlete and you're somehow not subbed to this channel, hit that sub button before you leave, please. And hit all the notifications as well. Because not only do I go live, if you have any questions about any one of my videos, and we've got 500 plus on this channel, okay? But if you have direct, if you want direct access to an experienced coach and a former competitive runner, you have it. Blackbeltrunningcoach at gmail.com is my email. Again, blackbeltrunningcoach at gmail.com is my email address. You can reach out to me anytime you like. We can talk about any one of my videos, okay? Or if you have personalized questions that you want to help, uh, that you might want help with. I'm happy to do that too. I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring for coaches. I do personalized coaching for athletes. So I'm here to help in any way that you see fit, any way that I'm capable of helping. And that's my way of giving back to the sport. That's really been wonderful to me. So, and again, if and at this point, I said this a lot recently, beyond coaching clinics and beyond certifications, where's the continuing education? That's why I'm building this community. I want to have like-minded coaches so we can confer with each other. We can't just call Marcus O'Sullivan and expect them to pick up or Mike Smith in Northern Arizona expect them to pick up anytime we want. Okay. You know, it's nice that some of them have make themselves available for questions pertaining to USA, USATF certification. But beyond that, there's really not access to these folks on a regular basis because they're busy coaching their athletes, and rightfully so. So I want to have this community where we can put our minds together and collectively move the sport forward together in our own way. Okay, that's and it's to me that's my way of serving the sport, becoming a better person, and making the world better. It's nothing more rewarding to me than empowering all of you and empowering your athletes. So um, I thank you for subscribing to the channel. It means the world. And hit the like button if you enjoy the content too. You know, any way you can show that, that you find the value, you find the, the content here valuable, it's important to me so that I know. And then I haven't put out yet that you haven't seen that you'd like me to put out. Let me know in the comments or email me if there's anything specific that I haven't put out yet. I'm happy to do it. Okay. Today, we're going to talk about two workouts, 10K progressions. Okay. One's based on 1600 meter repeats, one's based on 2K repeats. These are essentially sta staple reps for 10K. And 10, can't take, 10K tells you a lot about. How well you can transition up to the half marathon, how well you can move down to the 5K. And with the exception of Division Three collegiates, where you never exceed 10K in cross country, it's 8K or 5 miles. Division One, Division Two, you've got 10K races, regionals, conference sometimes, nationals, right? And Division One and Two. Division Three is just 5 miles or 8K, and it's for 6K for the women. So you can customize your training accordingly. That being said, 10K training is very, very important. It'll give you a lot of intel. It's a great way of building strength. So with that said, let's get to progression one, okay? Here we go. Okay, and again, before I put the slide off for a second, I always encourage folks to have consistency for your warm-ups. So if you're going to warm up one way, like let's just say two miles, warm up drills and strides and so on, I encourage you to do the same workout that you do on any day you do a hard workout. Same warm up that you want in a race. Have that consistent pattern of warm ups on days that you're going to run half, fast or hard. Okay, that way your body is used to it, your mind is used to it. It's clockwork. Another piece here is after your warm up, your drills and strides, let's just say two to three times a 200. This is a transitional piece. If this is the first time you heard this, this is something I have my athletes do with a lot of success. Transitional piece of two to three times a 200, finding the pace that you have set for the workout. Instead of having used one or two of these reps to find the pace, you can find it with these transitional reps. It's not gonna take anything out of the workout itself, okay? But anytime you do something with a longer rep like this, two to three times the 200 in the beginning help you find the pace, very, very helpful. On the flip side, if you're doing a short and fast workout, a tempo rep of like 800 meters to 1,000 to elevate the heart rate, okay, to help you transition into the more aggressive, faster pace running. So a longer tempo rep for shorter, faster workout, two to two to three times 200 here for the longer pace workouts. 
So it's up to you to decide this, though, whether it's most appropriate for yourself or your athletes. It's where coaching with the highest comes into play. This is just something that I've used with success over the last two decades as a coach, and I definitely want to share it with you. I think you might find it valuable. Now, progression workout number one. Okay, you bring, and again, you can do this two to three weeks apart from each other. The first record is four times 1,600 with a two-minute recovery at 10K pace. Okay, and again, you're building up to this point. Okay, and then after that, whether it's five minute per mile, six minute per mile, seven minute per mile, eight minute per mile, doesn't matter. That's the pace you're going to run the 1600 meter reps in. Okay, and that's why you do those 200s beforehand to help you find that pace. So you can actually do these four reps. And then on the back end, do four times a 400 with a one minute recovery at 5K pace. So you have five miles worth of volume in the workout, four miles of it with the longer reps, one mile with the shorter reps. Okay, then you can transition to five times the 1600 with a two minute recovery at 10k pace, your goal 10k pace. So that's progression point one and then two. Okay, you only have five miles worth of volume. Okay, but again, I'll say this and I said this before a lot of times the definition of success is defined as can we do the, the mid to end point workout? Can we do the stuff that all the other top athletes are doing? You may be able to, you may not be able to, and guess what? It doesn't matter. Just because they're doing it doesn't mean you can, doesn't mean you have to. What's applicable to these folks may not be applicable to you. This is where coaching with the eye is important. Okay? Building up. in your top athletes, national class, world class, they have taken months, years, sometimes decades to build up to the point where they can handle this type of volume. Okay? There are certain athletes that need super high volume. There are certain athletes that don't, like Bernard Legat. One of the greatest Kenyan slash American middle distance runners ever. Multiple world champ, Olympic medalist. Okay, he ran, he's 60, 60, uh, he ran six days a week. Okay. Now, I, I, not that I've heard, I haven't heard him exceed 70 miles in his training. You have some other folks that run 100, 120, 130 for 5K, 10K training. So it differs per people, for athlete. So everything's progressive with regards to what they're doing, addressing individual needs and talents and strengths. So just keep that in mind. Progression point, again, now we're going from, oops, excuse me. We're going to get to that one next. Workout three here. It's five times a 1,600. Okay, so you did workout two. Okay, five times 1,600 with a two-minute recovery, but we're adding four times a 400 on the back end here with a one-minute recovery at 5K pace. And remember, 5K pace work acts as a little bit of speed development for the 10K, but it gets you used to finishing strong. It gets you used to finishing faster. Okay? That's progression point three. And then six times 1,600 with a two-minute recovery at your goal, 10K base. Now you're at six miles worth of volume. Okay. If you can get to the point where you can do six miles worth of volume in a 10K workout, you are in good shape. It may not happen overnight, and that's okay. It may take months. It may take years. That's okay. Okay. But that's a good workout. It's a staple rep, mile reps, 600 meter reps for 10K. Absolutely staple. Okay, the second staple rep, and you just got a sneak peek of it, is two kilometer reps. Okay, this is progression two. Okay, three times a 2K with a two minute recovery at 10K pace. And then the fourth 2K is broken into four times a 500 with a one minute recovery at 5K pace. So the reps have gotten a little bit longer from 1600 to 2K, and the 400 meter reps turning into 500 meter reps now. Over time, You'll notice that some folks might respond better to the 2K and the 500s. Some folks might respond better to the, the 1600s and the 4s. That's why I'm giving you two options. Okay, and you can even progress from the 16s and 4s to this over time as well. Okay, so this is progression two. So three, again, three times the 2K with a two-minute recovery of 10K pace, and four times the 500, <clears throat> one-minute recovery of 5K pace. But then you progress towards four times the 2K. Now we're at 8K worth of volume. 2K, a two minute recovery. Again, the same pace. You're looking at locking in a 10K pace. So if you run, whether it's eight minutes per mile, you're running these 2K reps in, you know, 9.58 to 10 minutes and so on. Six minutes per mile, you're looking to run these in 7.28 to 7.30 and so on. Okay. So, and then progressing from this to this. The third progression point is four times 2K. Like you did in work in progression two with the same two minute recovery at 10K pace, but now we're adding four times a 500 on the back end. 
with a one minute recovery at 5k pace. And then the last progression is five times the 2k with a two minute recovery at goal 10k pace. So and generally the endpoint workout here is five times a 2k or six times in a 1600, but I'm giving you four pieces on how to put it together. The other pieces of the puzzle. How can you get to that point? How can you gradually go like that? Get to the point. Give yourself and give your athletes a chance to adapt. Give them time to adjust to it. Give them a chance to recover and so on. And you can make changes as well. Another reason why I broke down the last part into shorter reps is because sometimes athletes might get slower when you know they can't handle the back end of the workout. If they intend to slow down with a longer rep, you can start adding those short reps and then transition into the longer reps. And you can even go from four times a 400 to two times 800 or the four times a 500 to two times a 1000 before you progress towards that 2K at the end. There's a couple different ways you can do that. You can break down whatever the volume is of the rep into pieces that you see fit. But the end goal is five times a 2K, six times a 1600 to get to that workout. If you can do that over time, then that's a good testament to how fit you are, how fit, how fit your athletes are, and how ready you're going to be for a 10K. So that's what I got for you today. We're going to go over progressions for the half marathon next time. So stay tuned, gang. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.